Now we're going to talk about data operations, that is instructions and MIPS that do computations. So before we do that, let's go through the processor and how everything's hooked up. So we have our memory, and we talked about our memory here. Here you can see the word addresses for our memory. We've got our register file. I've made it smaller so it'll fit on the screen. We've got nine registers shown here, and register zero is always zero. We have our ALU. So ALU stands for arithmetic logic unit. This is the part of the processor that does the actual computation. And the way the processor works is we're going to load the instruction, you're going to have the instruction address in the program counter. So the program counter or PC holds the instruction address, and this tells the memory which instruction to look at. Instructions are fetched from the memory, and we fetch them, we store them in an instruction register. So this holds the current instruction that we're going to work on. The current instruction is then decoded by some control logic. And the control logic's job is to look at the current instruction and tell the rest of the processor what to do. So it tells the ALU what operation to do, should it be add or subtract, and it tells the register file which data to read and where to write the results back. Finally, the ALU is going to execute the operation. So to do that, it needs to take data from the register file, and then it's going to need to write data all the way back into the register file when it's done. And the last thing is the control logic is going to update the program counter to say what the next instruction is. So the control logic tells it, am I going to branch or jump, or am I going to just go on to the next instruction? So this is a view of the processor, and now we're going to walk through some programs to see how they all come together. So here's an addition-subtraction example. You can see in our memory here we have two instructions, add, r4, r0, r0. So it's going to add register 0, 0, register 0 and register 0 together and store them into register 4. And then we have subtraction R3 and R4. We're also going to put some values in our register file before the program starts so we can see what happens. Now let's go ahead and run the program. So our program counter is going to start at 0. This is going to cause us to go fetch the instruction at memory address 0 and load it into the instruction register. Now we're going to take the instruction from the instruction register and the control logic is going to decode it. First it's going to tell the ALU that it doesn't add instruction and then it's going to tell the register file which registers to use. So in this case we're going to read from register 0 and 0. So the two values for the ALU are both going to come from register 0. The ALU is going to do the addition and it's going to write it back into register 4 because the instruction tells you to write back into register 4. So after executing this instruction, we'll update the register file and have zero in register four. Now finally, the control logic is going to decide what's the next instruction. So this isn't a branch or a jump, so the next instruction is just the one after that. So we're going to go on to instruction four, because that's the next instruction. So now we do the same thing again. Our program counter says instruction four, so we're going to load instruction four from the memory into the instruction register. It's going to go into the control, tell the ALU what to do, in this case it's going to be a subtraction, and tell the register file which data to use. In this case we're going to use registers 3 and 4 and store them into register 1. So registers 3 and 4 and store them into register 1. Go ahead and do the computation and update register 1. Now the last part is the control to say which instruction to go on to. So what do we have here? Well we have a program counter. This is the program counter that specifies the address of the instruction to fetch. We have an instruction register, which holds the current instruction we're working on. We have a control unit, which decodes the instruction and tells the register file and the ALU what to do. The ALU is going to compute the result and write it back into the register file. And then finally, the control is going to continue. So here's a question. How much does the program counter increment to go on to the next instruction? Well, the program counter is going to increment by 4 bytes, and that's because each instruction is 32 bits or one word. So when we go from one instruction to the next, we need to increment by 4 bytes or 32 bits. So we start at a program address 0, we load that instruction and execute it. When we want to go on to the next instruction, we need to go on to address 4 to get the next 4 bytes and execute them. So you keep in mind that the instructions are each one word or four bytes, which is why I've written out the addresses here as word-aligned memory addresses. So another question on controlling the register file. Where does the register file here get information on which registers to read and write from? Well, they come from the control logic. 
The control logic is going to take the instruction and decode it and tell the register file what to do. So here in this example, if we're looking at instruction 0, it's going to take instruction 0, it's going to tell the ALU to the addition, and it's going to tell the register file to access the two registers. And then finally, it's going to tell the register file which register to write back to. So the control decodes the instruction and tells the rest of the processor what to do.